Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to When the Prophet Was Attacked. Powerful true story by companions of prophets. As I said previously, at the moment I'm learning about Prophet Muhammad, therefore I believe that videos like this could be very useful to find out the struggle that he faced as a man and as a prophet. With no further ado, let's have a look. Wallahi, I've read it many times. It always brings tears to my eyes when I remember my beloved Prophet This place which he had gone to was a taif It's a common place known in Saudi Arabia today. At that time, they were full of people who worshipped idols and were non-believers. It's about 60 kilometers away from Mecca. So he went on that journey with his freed slave. Like he had a slave whom he bought and then freed him. That was a common practice of the Prophet And he ordered and advised his companions to do the same thing, buy slaves and free them. So he freed his slave named Zayd ibn Harith. And they went out to Wat Ta'if. As soon as he arrived to Wat Ta'if, he spoke with the first man he saw and said, with the most greatest wisdom of words and the kindest manner, the Prophet used to approach them and say, I am the messenger of God and God has brought the Quran to you and used to recite the Quran to them to prove to them how this is not words of man. And then he would advise them and tell them the commandments and the prohibitions and the wisdoms which Allah subhanahu wa brought to him. The first man scorned him and said, away from me, O crazy man. So he went to another man, a leader of this, and he said to him, couldn't God have sent any other messenger than you? And then another man said to him, he said, if you truly are a prophet, then I am not worthy of listening to you. And if you are not a prophet, then you're a liar. Get away from you, insignificant man. So basically, they're giving him impossible challenges, showing their own hypocrisy, displaying that they will stay non-believers no matter what. It is very similar to the atheists nowadays when they claim that they would need definitive proof of God. But if you ask them what would be definitive proof of God for you, they debunk themselves and say that ultimately, even if God would appear right in front of them, it could be an alien species, a very advanced alien species, and therefore they can't know if it then really is is God or not? Pure hypocrisy. Scorns after scorns until finally he stayed there for more than seven nights, 10 days, more than 10 days, calling the people and trying to address them. Wallahi with his full heart trying to save them. So they got sick of him. Not one of them responded, not one. They got so sick of him that they wanted to exile him and throw him out. He was an unwel unwelcome guest. So they brought the children young boys and girls and they brought the women behind the boys and girls and then the men the slaves and the servants behind the women and then their leaders stood even behind them watching and laughing as they subjected the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to a narrow path imagine now a line on this side and a line on this side boys and girls women at the back Servants and peasants on the other side and they're all throwing rocks at you, spitting at you, throwing dirty material, filthy, impure things at your face, at your, at your legs and, and swearing at you in a land which is so strange to you and you don't know anyone there and you've come to them with a true message. All you're doing is just inviting and saying pure words of kindness and you haven't harmed anyone and this is the way you've been treated. The Prophet ﷺ with Zayd walking between these two lines, they threw the filth at him وسلم, until his legs began to bleed on both sides. And Zayd ibn Harith tried to protect him and he was injured in his head and the blood was seeping from him. Subjecting him to a few kilometers down, almost about two kilometers. All on his side, children, women spitting at him, cursing him, abusing him, laughing at him, pointing at him. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam, almost a 42 or 43 year old man. Until finally, at that time, very tired and exhausted. He sought refuge in one of the numerous gardens. He sat tired beneath one of the trees of the gardens and the people left him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two sons of Rabi'ah and they felt a bit of remorse for this man. So they said to their servant, they had a slave, a Christian slave, 
and his name was Addas. He said, go and take this tray of grapes to that man. We feel sorry for him. So Addas, the Christian slave, went to the Prophet and he gave him the grapes. Then the Prophet said some words which shocked Addas. He said, Bismillah. Because when we eat, we say Bismillah in the name yes. of God. The man Addas looked at him peculiarly and said, Where did you learn these words? These words are not common to the people of this land. I've never heard them before. The Prophet looked at him with a smile because that's his character. Even though he was treated so badly by all the people of the city. Listen to this carefully, brothers and sisters. I have a very important message here. He never ever generalized. Powerful. Every single individual was a potential Muslim and a potential good person. He looked at Addas and said, That is truly powerful because we as normal human beings, as common people, we always generalize. Even to make a point, we kind of have to generalize just in order to get our points across. Therefore, if you have a man that never generalized, this would be another sign of his prophethood, I have to admit. And he asked him, Oh, oh person, where are you from? And Addas said to him, I am from a place called Ninawa. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ninawa, the place where Yunus ibn Matta is from? Jonah. Addas looked at him and said, How do you know Adda? How do you know Yunus? Jonah. Tell me about Jonah. It was mentioned in the Bible. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, Jonah is my brother, meaning his brother in prophethood, and he is a prophet of God. And I am also a prophet of God. As soon as he said that, Addas began to kiss his forehead and his hands and his legs. And he began to cry. The, his leaders who were looking at him, they raced, raced up to him and said to him, Addas, come back here, come back. what are you doing? They brought him back and they said to him, don't follow him. Your religion is better than his religion. Don't get stunned by him. And Addas looked at him, at them with crying face and he said to them, Wallahi, by God, because that's what they used to say. No man knows what this man knows about Jonah except for another prophet. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Yet again, another goosebump video. I have to admit, listening to this story, it gave me another taste of the character of the prophet that he never generalized was a surprise to me. And as I mentioned already, not generalizing is almost unhuman because we as humans always generalize. We have to put things into boxes so they make sense to our limited brains. And this would definitely be another sign of prophethood. More than that is, of course, a sign of God's mercy as well. The way that he behaved, the patience that he displayed, people throwing rocks at him, making him bleed, spitting at him, and him sitting it through, knowing that he sits on truth, that he comes with a message of God to the unbelievers. Really, really powerful video. Truly moved me. Thank you so much for the recommendation, guys. But anyways, this is it for today's video. Guys, if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support as always may god bless you all much love and peace